Okay, n now uh, classification was done and it took like almost half an hour to do it for this small data set that I have here. So this is a quite fairly slow method, but uh, it uh, may bring some kind of nice results. So uh, let's check what kind of data we have here. Uh, well, mostly the membranes of mitochondria were segmented fairly well, but there are okay some gaps. And it, it depends on what kind of results are expected. But uh, I would probably now try to fill this mitochondria and just uh, model them as the blobs. So, uh, but first let's take this selection that we have here in uh, green and then assign it to the mask layer. So I select the mask in the add to list box and then press shift R to uh, move this uh, green layer, green, which is selection to the mask. Uh, okay, let's actually few, a few words about the classifier. So uh, the classifier uh, created a temporary, temporal directory in the uh, under the directory which has our data and within this directory there are this uh, individual files for each slice that are filtered data and there is the actual classifier information so basically we don't need this directory uh, after we uh, classified our data set we only may keep it if we want to use it in the future for something, for some other part of the same data set. Uh, I can just delete the folder or I can, in this window, I just click wipe temp di directory. So it's, it should uh, remove the directory from the disk, including this temporary, temporal uh, files and the uh, actual classifier. <coughs> So now let's try to calculate statistics for the masks that we have. Uh, let's start with 3D objects. So we can see there are the big objects and uh, some small ones. Uh, probably actually the, the best way would be is just to do the uh, selection of the, meta of the places where we, we actually have mitochondria. So <clears throat> this may be done uh, in the following way. So uh, what we need to go, we need to selection type and there is a tool which is called mask model. And this tool allows a selection of uh, objects from our mask or models that we have using just the mouse by clicking. So for example, I can click on this model checkbox and this allow me uh, with the mouse click to select individual objects that belong to uh, materials of the model. So I just click on that material and it's got selected. Um, if I uncheck that, then the selection will be done from the mask. So if I just click here on the on these objects, so they're going to be selected. Uh, this uh, mode works also with 3D. In, in order to do selection in 3D, uh, the 3D checkbox in the selection panel have to be selected, but it it doesn't work st work straight away. So uh, the program requires the parameters of the objects to be calculated, and in order to do that, uh, there is a recalc button. So I just press this, and then it analyzes the objects that we have in the mask layer. And now, if we okay. If we just click on this mitochondria, what actually happened that we select the whole mitochondria in the volume. So uh, in this particular case, what we'll do, we just click on this mitochondria that we rec can recognize, leaving the other uh, objects intact. Okay, 
Now uh, we selected the mitochondria in our data set and then we again continue working with the mask. So we just press Shift R to replace the mask layer. So uh, in general, now we have uh, mostly mitochondria with a few small pieces like these things. Um, um, maybe we can try to filter the data now this mask based on the intensity for example to calculate the um, maybe the other intensity for 2D objects uh, what we see, and then we interested in the selection of the darkest objects that we have in the data set let's take from uh, 0 to let's try 50 and now we just need to check that we didn't we haven't selected the the mitochondria but we also didn't take these pieces so maybe I'll take a bit larger variation 90 Okay, with the 90 I start to get uh, some pieces of mitochondria. So maybe I'll just stick to 60. And then I shift, I, I'll press Shift S to subtract that. Okay. Then, um, because I want to make the blobs out of this mitochondria, so what I'll do, I'll just uh, select all the mask, mask, selection, all frames, uh, add. Now they selected. Uh, now I will fill them by uh, pressing Shift F, fill the holes. But you can see that uh, they're still kind of not really that well filled, especially like in this mitochondria. So the trick that I will do <coughs> Uh, I will uh, expand, I will grow this mitochondria in the volume. So I'll make sure that there is a 3D selected and the, the trail is something like 3. And then I press D, delayed button. So what happened is actually all these mitochondria were grown in the, in the volume. So with this I can basically fill these gaps that I have in, in the single mitochondria. Now I press again Shift F to fill the gaps, and uh, I need to return back to the same volume as I had uh, in the previous step. So I press arrow button or Z shortcut. So with this, I basically return my shapes to the uh, to the same uh, size as the uh, the mitochondria were before this step. And then at this step, I press again Shift R to replace the mask. So that's mostly done, but of course there are this kind of some problems and then they, those most likely have to be filled manually using the brush. So I switch on the brush tool and then I basically start to polishing this mitochondria in the areas that are where they have problems. And uh, this is actually like uh, the problem of this data set in a way. So I start polishing the data set. Uh, maybe there is a slight thing like for example now the mask is actually growing over some of these uh, ER profiles for example here so what we actually will do now we will uh, remove these areas so I will I will make sure that mm -hmm, I select exterior in the select from list box click this fix selection to material and then I will go mask to selection all frames replace. So because uh, we now fix selection only to the to our background, all uh, areas that actually that uh, that are overlapping with the model they were not selected. And now I can maybe highlight this mito material and check fix selection to material and then press shift. A to add this to the to the model. Then I switch off the mask, and uh, basically that's the current situation. What kind of things we have? We need to fill this, uh, fill some of these problems and some of this uh, on some of the frames for the mitochondria, and then after that these 
the this model will be ready uh, for the visualization. So um, <coughs> uh, then, for example, in this case, when I have uh, that uh, the model is actually larger than it's supposed to be, I can fix that uh, using the symbol trick as I did with the uh, exterior. So I select the Mito model 4, press fix selection to material, and then I, when I paint over it will only highlight these areas of this material 4 without uh, selecting material uh, three, which is in the plasma reticulum, and press S to subtract. And then uh, this checkbox can be uh, toggled using shift plus space shortcut. Okay, so the point now is just to polish the model by uh, filling the gaps. So uh, to fill mitochondria, what I basically do I'll just uh, I select the areas at the edge leaving the central part without really a uh, modification so just to make sure that I form this kind of closed um, closed shapes and then internal parts may be filled later without the fill and then I press alt a to select this model and press shift f to fill these parts and then press shift A to add it to the model. Uh, then we have this background model which we can select so I just uh, highlight it and press the mouse but uh, minus button and then uh, I, I will delete this material. Okay so it took me almost maybe half an hour or like 25 minutes to get this mitochondria field. But uh, there are, of course, still quite many problems. For example, like these areas, which are kind of do not belong to the uh, to the mitochondria. So we should get rid of those. Um, it's fairly easy to do. So what we need to do, we again go to the mitochondria, uh, make a new selection, or press Alt A. Uh, just make sure that the mask is switched off. Because if the mask is on, then the Alt A will preferably select the mask. So uh, if the mask is off, then the Alt A shortcut will uh, select the, uh, the the currently uh, selected uh, material. Then uh, what we'll do? We again make sure that the 3D box is checked on. So uh, we will erode the or shrink in 3D the current selection that we have I'm pressing this button so you, you can see that the uh, selection became smaller and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to remove these uh, areas that do not belong to the, to the mitochondria then we probably need to do it again so now we have these blobs mitochondrial blobs and uh, just to return back to the same size we need to do twice Dilation once, twice. When it's done, we can now uh, press Shift R to replace the mitochondrial model with this new one. So uh, basically, mitochondria now thresholded except the few areas which are th th which were filled somewhere here. So uh, you can see that there are some kind of gaps that should be between the mitochondria. They actually may be filled or there is this kind of tight area in here which uh, ended up to be filled so depending how precise you want to be you will be you may need to kind of open this up oh, there's a slight problem in this place so we just briefly fix that Okay, so now I think we are quite fine. So now we can go uh, model, save model as. And uh, save model as uh, Amira Mesh for uh, visualization. Okay. 
load the data, connect labels to the actual data set. Make a surface generator module. And then finally visualize the surface. Okay. So basically what we have here, we have four materials. The yellow are lipid droplets. The blue ones are mitochondria. The green is endoplasmic reticulum and the reddish r reddish one is the nuclear envelope okay thank you for watching